Hello, my dear friends. I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am a cardiologist, and I welcome you all to the today's daily dose. So, as a part of today's daily dose, the clinical question is: I have a 16-year-old male. He is referred for the assessment of hypertension. On average, his blood pressure is 165 by 85 millimeters of mercury with radiofemoral delay. There is a mid-systolic murmur maximal at the aortic area radiating to the back. Clinical findings and ECG are compatible with the left ventricular hypertrophy. What is the most likely underlying pathology? Hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, congenital aortic stenosis, coarctation of aorta, patent ductus arteriosus, atrial septal defect. Now, so if you take this clinical question, the very important point here is the presence of radiofemoral delay. The individual having hypertension. On auscultation, there is presence of the mid-systolic murmur, which is present in the aortic area, which is radiating to the back. And ECG very much suggests you of left ventricular hypertrophy. So these are the uh, very important points in the clinical history and as well as examination of this particular patient. Now you take this mid-systolic murmur. In which all conditions you will have this mid-systolic murmur? You can have this mid-systolic murmur in patients with aortic stenosis. You can have in patients with pulmonary stenosis. You can also have in patients with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, and then as well as the coarctation of aorta, right? But whereas you take in patients with aortic stenosis, definitely yes, you will have mid-systolic murmur. But remember, in aortic stenosis, like you will have the murmur which is heard in the aortic area, but that will be radiating to the carotids, but it will not radiate to the back. So that is the reason why your aortic stenosis is not the option here. Then pulmonary stenosis, it is best heard in the pulmonary area, but it will not have any particular radiation to the carotids. And hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, here also you will have ejection systolic murmur. But remember where exactly you will have this ejection systolic murmur is not in the aortic area, right? So you will have this ejection systolic murmur in patients with the HOCM in the left parasternal area and there is no radiation of this particular HOCM to either carotids or to the back. But what is the clinical condition where you have ejection systolic murmur which will radiate to the back that is in patients with the coarctation of aorta. Now one important point in favor of coarctation of aorta in this condition is the presence of radiofemoral delay. So, radiofemoral delay is a very important finding in patients with the coarctation of aorta. Now, let me just show you what exactly is the coarctation of aorta. So, coarctation of aorta is that where there is narrowing of the aorta distal to the left subclavian artery. Right? So, distal to the left subclavian artery, there is narrowing of the aorta. So, thereby what will happen? The blood supply to the upper limb, it will be more through your right and as well as left subclavian artery but whereas the blood supply to the lower limbs will be reduced and that is the reason why the individual will have the radiofemoral delay. And there are two important multiple choice questions here. We need to understand where do you have this radiofemoral delay and where do you have this radioradial delay. Radiofemoral delay it is present in patients with the coarctation of iota whereas if you take the radioradial delay Radio radial delay, it is present in patients with the Takayasu arthritis, right? And it is also present in patients with subclavian stenosis and to certain extent, it is also present in patients with coarctation of iota. So these are all the conditions where you have the radio radial delay. So, now, if you take this particular question, there are two important points in favor of your coarctation of aorta. One is radiofemoral delay and as well as the presence of ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area radiating to the back. Now, why do you think these patients will have hypertension? Why? Because now if you see this picture, there is narrowing of the aorta distal to the left subclavian artery. So thereby, what will happen to your renal perfusion? renal perfusion will be reduced. So once the renal perfusion is reduced, there will be activation of your RAS mechanism that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system and because of which the individual will have hypertension. 
right so in patients with a coagulation of iota the hypertension is mainly because of the activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and i said you that ecg is suggestive of the left ventricular hypertrophy right and what is the criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy that is your sokolov leone criteria so this is a very very important criteria and very frequently asked in your exams now what is your sokolov leone criteria if you sum up the sv1 see this is your s wave and if you sum up the r v5 or v6 so if you sum up sv1 and as well as r v5 or v6 the sum should be more than 35 mm that is suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy according to your sokolov leone criteria and in patients with coagulation of iota the x ray is also very very important so what is that you will notice in the x ray in patients with the coagulation of iota is you will see the three sign right so this is your iota okay this is your iota coagulation of iota so the three sign in patients with coagulation of iota on x ray is a very very important finding and not only that you will also see the notching of the lower margins of the ribs in the x ray so these are the important x ray findings in patients with the coagulation of iota so if you go back to the question hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy is completely ruled out and another important point is in patients with hocm the individual will not have hypertension the individual will not have radio femoral delay only thing they can have ejection systolic murmur and ecg also can show left ventricular hypertrophy in patients with hocm so there are many points which are against so that is the reason why hocm is not the answer and you take in patients with congenital aortic stenosis here also they will not have hypertension so hypertension is completely against your congenital aortic stenosis and in patent ductus arteriosus you will have a continuous murmur you will not have ejection systolic murmur you will have the continuous murmur and in patients with the atrial septal defect you will have functional murmur of pulmonary hypertension that is ejection systolic murmur and not only that in patients with atrial septal defect you will have wide fixed split of the second heart sound that is a very very important finding in patients with the asd right and they will not have the murmur which will be radiating to the back so that is the reason why your atrial septal defect is also ruled out so this is these are the few points of discussion on the coagulation of iota right so i hope you might have liked this particular daily dose and follow our channel for the daily updates on this particular daily dose So thank you very much and please follow our channel